Welcome back to our renovation. Today I am at home working on our bathroom. This is going to be the main bathroom in the house. So far, as you can see, we haven't gotten a whole lot done, but today I'm hoping to make some big progress. I'm going to start with installing the toilet carrier. Now this is a toilet carrier and what it is is a metal frame that installs in the wall to carry a wall hung toilet. So this actually includes the tank, which is a plastic tank wrapped in styrofoam. It's a pretty basic thing. It's just a plastic tank with a metal frame. And now I frame this wall 19 three quarter inches to hold this. So it's going to be a quick and easy install. All I have to do is bolt it in to those studs. So I'm going to go ahead and get the measurements done because it does have adjustable feet where you can raise and lower it to set the height of your bowl. And I just want to make sure we get the bowl height where we want it. So after I get my measurements figured out, we'll get it bolted in and then we can get started on the plumbing. It took me a little while, but we have it installed exactly where I want it, I hope. Now, we haven't run any plumbing or anything yet. We just have it secured in place. I ended up installing some more corner blocking here to just stiffen up this whole corner. I'm happier now with that. Now, you'll see we bought Geberit brand carrier. There's a few different ones on the market. This is the one that we've always installed, never had a problem with it, so there's no point in changing. I like this unit. And we love wall hung toilets. It just gets the toilet off the floor. There's no wax ring. It's just nice. Even though the tank is installed in the wall, it's super easy to maintain because you can access everything from the flush plate. So right here on the wall is a flush plate where you has two, a big flush and a little flush. And that plate can come off and this door opens up right here, you can see. But everything can come in and out of here. The valve, the flush units, everything, the fill unit, everything can be maintained. So no parts are permanently stuck inside your wall except for the tank. And it's a one piece solid sealed tank. It's not going to leak unless you poke a hole in it. Now that is with one thing that I always forget to mention is that if you install one of these, you wanna make sure you have a chlorine filter if you're on city water, a whole house filter to capture chlorine because you don't want chlorinated water in a unit like this. Chlorine is really hard on plastics and it will degrade plastic over time. It's hard on PEX, it's hard on this, it's hard on the rubber seals that are in here. There's a rubber seal in this downpipe for the fill. So chlorine, will deteriorate the plastic and the seals and make this not last as long. Now we're on well water. I'm not worried about chlorine, so this will last a good long time. We have a sediment filter to keep any debris out. That's all we have to worry about. But I just wanted to give that little warning that if you do ever install a toilet like this, filter out that chlorine so you're not ruining the plastic. Now I installed a water valve right here at the top and got a hole drilled over here for the water line. so. I'm gonna start planning out my plumbing. I don't know if I'm quite ready to start running plumbing, but I guess it's gotta be done sooner or later. So I guess I'll look at that as the next step. Let me get the PEX pulled out and we'll see what we can do. We're installing a PEX A. This is a cold expansion PEX, which I'll show you later, but basically it expands over the fittings instead of being crimped onto the fittings. Since we're working on the carrier, this will be the first line I run to the new bathroom. So the toilet is 100% right now. I'm feeling good about that. So I'm gonna start working on the sink. Now I'm gonna be attaching these drop ear elbows. This has my expansion pecs fitting on one end, threaded input on the other. You usually wouldn't install one of these you would typically just stub out, which means the pipe comes out of the wall and that's it. And then you would put a stop valve on it. You know, the typical little silver valves you see under your sink. But since we're doing a wall mounted sink with no cabinet under it, you're gonna see this and I want it to look as pretty as we can. So we bought some fancier 
valves and those require this hookup. So that's why I'm doing it a little different. And I just think it's worth pointing out because I don't want anybody copying me or thinking this is how it should be done. But this isn't necessarily how it should be done. This is just how Kohler wants their valves installed. That's that. Now I just gotta send my water lines down. So I'm gonna send my hot and cold lines down through the floor. I'll get them set up, lined up in the crawl space, and then we'll come up here and cut them. Ah! Oh, I just lost my pecs down the tube. Since I'm showing the process, I'll show you guys what I'm using to suspend the pecs in these large holes. You might have noticed that I have these super large holes that the pecs are going through. Well, I made them that way to hold these isolators, and these are just plastic rings that will kind of just keep it from moving around, but also gives it room to flex and move as the pecs will do, as the water heats and cools and different things. Uh, the PEX is going to need a little movement, so that's perfect for that. Now it's nice and snug, they're not going to fall. And I'll come back through and I'll tack these in. You can see there's little holes in the sides. Now that I have these set, I'm going to put these sleeves on the end. These are the expansion sleeves that help grip the fittings. And we'll use my expansion tool to just expand the PEX pipe. We'll slide it over the fitting and it'll contract and grab that fitting. It'll be a leak free connection. You ready? Got those in. Got them in. Okay, the sink is done. I think that's good. I don't know if that's perfect, but that's pretty good for now. And I can use that to get my water lines run. So again, I'll have to run down in the crawl space. We'll pull these down to where we need them. And then we can get them cut to fit. Boy, I hope I can do this. It's a tight bend. I finished soldering up the shower and tub spouts and I also cut this PEX to length. It's ready to put in. I haven't put it on yet because I'm gonna wait until I get another bend support. I ran out, I wanna get them bent like this. I believe all the water plumbing is done in this room right now. So the next step is drains and I have a box of fittings I'm going to start planning out my drains. We certainly are going to need more because I just have random pieces. So if I can see what I have, I'll make a list of what we need and then we'll get all the drains run. Ultimately, I'm just trying to work toward getting this tub installed. That's what I'd really like to see happen. So after looking at all the drain lines and what I'm going to need, I realize I really do have to go to the store before I can start anything. So it's going to be a while before I get to that. I don't feel like running to the store right this moment, but we did put together a list. And honestly, this type of plumbing where you're just gluing PVC together, it's really, bo it's really boring. 
it's a little slow. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and skip over this part. I'll just get it done. We'll probably work on it later tonight. And then I'll just come back and show you guys the finished product because it's just a lot of cutting and gluing, piecing it all together. It's not exciting at all. So while it was just a quick moment for you guys, we just spent the last couple days finishing up all of the plumbing. Now, it didn't take full days of work, but we had to run to the store, buy a couple of things that we forgot the first time. That's always the case. When you're doing plumbing, expect to have to go to the store a couple of times to get everything you need. And we are done on the top end. So what I'm saying is all of the plumbing in here, vents, everything is finished so that we can finish the bathroom. Now I'm not 100% like in the crawl space yet. We're not tied into the main line because I'm just not ready for that. Obviously we, we don't want sewer gas coming up and everything else. I know you could plug them, but I just wanted to get all the plumbing done in this room so that we could install the tub, start working on the walls, do whatever we can. It's looking really good. I got the shower valve roughed in, water lines attached, everything's secured. This looks good. It's been a while since I did some soldering and I hope those are good. They should be nice and sealed. Over here was a bit tricky. You see we have a lot of pipes going on and that's because I have a vent. This is all venting. So I have the kitchen sink vent coming from the kitchen around the corner tying into this vent pipe. We have the tub vent. So tub, kitchen sink, and then way up here is the bathroom sink. And this is actually the uh, toilet vent as well. The toilet vents underneath the floor and comes up. So everything centralized going up into the attic and will be going through the roof. Again, I'm not 100% yet, but the, the bathroom is done and that's what's important right now. Water lines are secured. Everything's strapped, everything's solid. I keep going around the room and double and triple checking everything, trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. And I think honestly, we're done. I finished the toilet carrier, put on the protective covers so that we don't get any dust or debris in the toilet tank. And I know some of you guys would love to see more of the work, more of the, the process of going through all this. But right now I'm just not in the mood to do a how-to and it's very slow work. It's just piecing things in and trying to get the measurements right. And I, I did a really good job in here. Everything is very precise. I didn't have any mistakes. So I'm happy about that, but it just takes me time. And so I just wanted to work on it and get it done. We have a whole mobile home to renovate and there I can show you guys step by step. I can show you all the plumbing and how I run it. But here I just wanted to get it done because this isn't important. What's important is the bathroom getting finished. With all that said, we're at the point now where we can bring the bathtub in here, get it set in place, see how it sits on the floor. If it feels good, I'm hoping we won't need a mortar bed under it. This tub can be set without mortar as long as the floor is level and the feet all touch. So I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring that in here, just see how it looks. Hitting this now. Ah, the bolts. Okay. I don't hear it doing anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we tried making the floor pretty flat. This tub came with this felt pad. It's really thin, but it, I think it just quiets the tub down so it's not sitting on the wood directly. And our floor was so level that we feel comfortable just doing this. We're not gonna do a mortar bed, so tub's gonna sit right on the floor. And as you guys can see over here, we just installed the tub drain. Guys, that was super quick and easy. I've always bought the PVC kits that you glue together. You have to cut them to length. This one's um, polypropylene or whatever it is, and it's just adjustable. You just popped it together. I can't believe a tub drain can be that easy. Tub drain is on. 
Hole is cut, pad is down, we have a staple to the floor. We're ready to set the tub in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold it. You got it? Yep. Okay. I don't know if I'm in the opening. I don't want to break this. You might have died, me. I got it? Yep. It looks really good. Is this the scariest part? Should you be doing that with... It'll be fine. Okay. I'm nervous because I'm going toward the face. I wonder if I should flip it around and try to hit it from the front now that I have a hole. This is scary too. Let's do this tub spout. This is looking okay. Gonna yeah. push it in a little bit here. Yep. Honestly, it's probably the best cutout I've done. Ever in your life? Yeah. And I wish I put this through the front like I did on the other one because I did have a little bit of splintering here. That doesn't matter. It'll get covered by the Yeah. Spout. Well, this looks really good. It all lines up nice and straight. I'm super happy. I feel like I even got my valve in the right spot, the right depth. It's touching the back of the shower unit. Whew, this is cool. Well guys, we did it. The shower is installed. We're pretty happy with this installation and it was a lot of work to get to this point, doing all the plumbing, doing all the framing, make sure everything's right. And honestly, we're like way behind schedule. We don't really keep a schedule but we bought this tub and shower unit months ago because we always think that we're going to get to projects a lot sooner than we actually do in real life. And so this has been sitting on our back porch for months and months while we slowly catch up to these projects. And I'm just happy that it's in good shape and that it installed easily. Um, the only thing I'll say is I'm a little nervous about how it's going to be used because I thought this design looked really cool, looked really simple. It has this nice wide shelf here. And I thought that was neat because tubs usually have not enough storage space. But in standing in here, the shelf makes it feel crowded because you have this barrier stopping you from being centered in the tub more or less. So I hope that's not gonna be an inconvenience. I could picture if this was gone, how much roomier it would feel. You wouldn't be rubbing your arm on the shelf and probably knocking bottles off and... It's really weird. Yeah, so I'm not sure we made the right decision here. I like the tile look. I like, I just like how it looks, but it might not be the right decision. We're gonna go with it. We have it installed. We're way past return periods, I'm sure. Oh yeah. We're not hating it. We just hope it's not impractical. That's where I'm at on it. If anything, it, it looks okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. It is a caulkless shower. That means no caulk needed. It won't leak. That's why we chose this brand. We always stick with this type of tub because we have really good luck with them. They last a long time and you don't have to worry about silicone, which gets disgusting in our experience. I just hope we like this before we commit too hard to this, to this shower. If we have to, I was just telling Ashley, 
that they do make different surrounds where the tub can stay in place and we could replace the walls and have a different style with without this shelf here if it's a nuisance but I hope we don't have to do that because what do you do with these so we'll see at the very least you can lean and think in the shower <laughs> Let's do what I would do. <laughs> Just have the water on me. Uh. One more thing that we should point out is that we installed the water on this side. Our toilet and our sink are going on this side of the room. And that's a break away from the norm for us because in the past we've always just put all the water on one wall to make it easy to plumb. Ashley had a special request this time that... Put it over here. <laughs> Because I don't like leaning over toilets to get to the plumbing. I think it's really awkward and weird. So yeah. if it's over here, it's like it's just open and I can get to it. She can walk in the bathroom, open the door, turn on the water. It's right there. You don't have to yeah. be leaning. Yeah, the whole leaning over the toilet thing is like gross and bizarre. I don't like it. So I think that's cool because I've never, I know it's a small thing, but I've installed a few showers and I've never yeah. installed one on the opposite end. Yeah. So I like it. I think it's better. So there it is. Now this isn't going to be like our bathroom. We probably, probably won't even take a shower in here. No. Because we have a master bath that we use. Yep. But still we want convenience and we try to build for function to make it the most convenient as we can for everybody. As long as we're happy with the tub, the next step will be, well, I gotta do a couple wiring jobs, but we can start working on the walls and then the bathroom's gonna look complete. Mm -hmm. I mean, the walls is, that's it. That's the big change. Yep. And then the sink can go in and the toilet. And we have the sink, we have the toilet, we have everything we need to get wow. this room together. We've had those for a year plus, probably. We've had those since we've had the other ones. So we're all set. Big progress. We're gonna get this buttoned up, but uh, probably probably won't be for a couple videos because we're gonna be working in the living room again. Finishing that up. So we're just bouncing around. So just stay tuned for whatever's coming. We don't know what's next, but that's all we have for tonight, so. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care. See ya.